I'm pretty sure you have never done a derivative like this before because I just made this up for you guys. So we are going to differentiate the integral going from 0 to another integral and this integral goes from 0 to inverse sine x. So this is where the x is. It looks horrible, right? But it's actually not so bad because we can just use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1. So let's go ahead and make that happen. FTC1 pretty much says the derivative and the integral cancel and we just have to replace this into the dummy variable here. So we will first get 1 over and then we have 1 plus e and then the t becomes the integral going from 0 to inverse sine x and then we have secant u du. But this is not it yet because of course we have to use the chendu. So we have to multiply by the derivative of this. Yes, I know, FTC1, one more time. So we put this inside here and we will get secant of inverse sine x. And lastly, can do one more time, the derivative of that. So we get 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. In fact, I set this up in a way that you can see some very nice simplifications. So far so good, but we can do better. Check this out. Perhaps let's just go ahead and work this out and you will see the e, why I picked the e to some power. So let's go ahead and do that on the side here. If we look at the integral going from 0 to inverse sine x secant u du. First, the integral of secant, well, by the standard result, we can just say this is ln absolute value of secant u plus tangent u. This is not tau. Tangent u. This is not tanu. This is tangent u. And then we have to plug in, plug in, right? So plug in 0 and then plug in inverse sine x. So let's go ahead and do that. We will get ln absolute value secant of inverse sine x and then we add this is tangent of inverse sine x and then absolute value why did i pick zero of course it's because it's easy we will have to subtract plug in zero secant zero is one tangent zero is zero zero plus one is one ln one is zero so this is all we need and the truth is you see that we have this and that it's the original trig function composed with an inverse trig function. We can actually write it as an algebraic expression. And the way that we can do that is to use the triangle method. So I will just put it down right here for you guys real quick. Yeah, let me do it like this. So the triangle method says, take a look at the inverse sine x. And uh, we can call this to be an angle that say theta. So this means we can have sine of the theta equals x and we can write theta i mean x as x over one and then based on this draw our right triangle here is our right angle and the angle theta is here and by the definition of sine on the right triangle this is opposite over hypotenuse so that's what we have and we can figure out the adjacent by taking the square root and you do the hypotenuse square which is just one square and you minus the other side square. And based on this, we can figure out secant of inverse sine because that's just going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And likewise, we can also figure this out, which is just this over that. But you know what? You know what? This is ln, right? We are going to put this right here and then we have e to the ln. So e and ln cancel. So this is what we are going to get. Check this out. We still have the 1 over. We have the 1 in the front. And then we are going to add E and LN cancel. And this guy is just going to be this over that. So we will have square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we are going to add tangent of that, which is just this over that. So we have x over square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's actually the first part, which I think is very nice. Of course, because I make this up, so I will say that, of course. But no, I'm not doing that. Anyway, next we have this, which is going to be this over that. 
Yeah, so we multiply by square root of 1 minus x squared and you see and then we multiply by this which is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared aha take a look this and that can solve very nicely and perhaps right here we can clean this up a little bit more and to do so let's just multiply the top and bottom by the square root of and let's do like this square root of 1 minus x squared square root of 1 minus x squared and then we will see on the top we get that square root of 1 minus x squared and then when we do this times that we have square root of 1 minus x squared and then when we do this times that will the square root cancel we'll still have the plus 1 minus x and then i mean x squared and lastly this times that of course the square root and all that stuff cancel so we just have the plus x look at that and um this is totally okay and perhaps i'll just take some more time to uh, write it in the word that we like which is the following let's write this down first which is negative x squared and then plus x and then plus 1 and then lastly we have the square root of 1 minus x squared how cool is this? look at that yeah yeah why else do you guys want to differentiate next time? Maybe we put another no, don't don't do that. Maybe we put another integral right here. But um, maybe not. I, I think this is pretty good. Uh, it took me a while to actually come up with this question, and the simplification <laughs> was actually pretty nice. Yeah. Alright, anyway, hopefully you guys all like it. If you have any ideas for what we need to differentiate next, just let me know any suggestions any idea any crazy uh, problems yeah that's it